series models use past measurements to be able to predict what's going to happen in the future. Now here you can see a proportional integral derivative controller where the heater is being adjusted to try to meet a temperature set point. And we want to be able to predict what's going to happen next, especially as we start designing more model-based controllers. And so this lecture is about the ARX, or autoregressive exogenous input models. It's a common type of linear model for uh, dynamic systems. And so let's go ahead and just talk about the equations of this model, and then we'll work on simulating and also how to create a model from data. So system identification, and we'll have an exercise where we collect our own data and then uh, use that to create these ARX models. So let's just talk about, first of all, uh, the ARX. All right, I'll go ahead and just uh, mention we've got an autoregressive part and then an exogenous part as well. So let's talk about the autoregressive part, first of all. All right, so here we have our output y that might be our temperature and then our input is going to be u but let's just say we're trying to predict what's going to happen at this next point right here given these three points prior all right so you could draw a line through them and predict what's going to happen next but let's go ahead and create this mathematical model so i'll just say y at t Okay, this is going to be our time, t, and that's going to be equal to some constant plus a1, and that's going to be another constant that we're going to determine through regression, okay, times y times, uh, times t of, of t of 1. Okay, so this is going to be y t minus 1, this is going to be y t minus 2, and y t minus 3. And then this point right here is going to be y of t. So we want to be able to use, okay, a1, a2, and I'll make that a function, y t minus 2 plus a3, y t minus 3. Okay, so this is called an autoregressive model. And then if you want to be able to match up with the measurements exactly, we'll also put an error here as well. And that error adjusts for any kind of discrepancy between our predicted values and our measured values. But let's go ahead and just do the exogenous part now. Um, so we're going to have y of t equals c plus, and then I'm going to create uh, b1 times u of t minus 1. And this is going to correspond to Okay, down here, this is going to be u of t. But what happens right now has no instantaneous effect on y of t. So we typically start with one time step in the back. Okay, t minus 1. And there is a u t minus 2. And here is going to be u t minus 3. Okay, so I'm just going to create this exogenous part of the model, the exogenous input variables, and I'll have b2 times u of t minus 2 plus b3 u of t minus 3. All right, so both of these have, you know, I mean, there's strengths to this one. This is commonly used in model predictive control for industrial like refineries and chemical plants. This is also called a finite impulse response model or FIR model. Okay, but if we want to also consider some of these terms as well, we're going to combine those into this ARX model. Okay, so uh, combined, if we combine these into one, then we get our ARX. And that's just going to be Y of T. And then I'm going to have uh, equals a constant C plus A1, Y, T minus 1, plus A2, Y, T minus 2, plus A3, Y, T minus 3. Okay, and then plus, and let's just go ahead and add the B terms as well. Oh, 
Okay, so I've taken three points uh, back in time and use those to predict what is going to be the future Y value. And so we can see that with the heater application. We want to do that because our inputs are going to be affecting, okay, if, as we increase or decrease this, you could see that slope increases or decreases there based on how much heat we're putting into this process. Okay, so we want to be able to use both of those with this ARX model. All right, so we can also use this to uh, well, let's go put put this into a more compact form. All right, so I'm just going to say y, and I'll just do k plus 1. So since we do k plus 1, just shift the indices. That's just the sample time. It doesn't have to be like one second back. It can be any number of samples back. And then I'm going to say that's going to be equal to a constant plus summation. And then this is going to be i equals 1. And then I'll just say that's an a. And then I'll have a i times y k minus i plus 1. All right, so that's our first part. And then our second part is going to be i equals 1 to number of b terms here. All right, and then I'm going to have b i u, and then this is going to be k minus i plus 1 as well. So that's just a summation that gives us any number of n a terms. Okay, and n b. We can make these as long or short as needed. So FIR models, typically these are, you know, 60 to 120 in terms of length. With an FIR model, if you're modeling a distillation column or something like that, it can even be a little bit longer. That's for industrial model predictive control applications. All right, so um, let's go ahead and just simulate uh, some of these. In, in Gecko, there's, I'll just share with you the um, some of the code for Gecko that is used to simulate and create these ARX models. So I'll put this link in the description of the video um, and just review some of the math here. But if you want to just get right to the code, a good way to do that is right here through this Jupyter Notebook link. And you can just right click here, save link as, and then save it as an IPython notebook. Or you can come back here and just select this Google Colab link, and then that will let you run it just through a web browser. Okay, so I'm going to just go through some of the code with you on how to simulate. Okay, so first of all, we just need to import packages. We'll have NumPy, Gecko, and Matplotlib. All right, and I'll go ahead and run this one. All right, now this is our ARX model simulation. Now this is the difficult way to create it. If you know the coefficients, you can put those in as a dictionary. I'll just say I have two um, prior time steps I want to use for Y, and then one prior time step that I want to use for U. All right, and I have maybe two outputs and two inputs. Okay, so this is a multivariate system with, uh, let's say I had two heaters and two temperature sensors, then I'd have two inputs and two outputs. All right, so I'm gonna create my A matrix. These are gonna be the A individual terms. Here's my B matrix. Okay, this is gonna be NY times NB times NU. All right, and I'll go ahead and just put the transpose on these, okay, and then fit them together as a NumPy array. And then there's my C, my constant as well. And then I'll create my parameter dictionary. And I'll just do P equals the combination of A, B, and C. All right, and then I'll create my Gecko model. And this is the one right here, okay, Y comma U equals M dot ARX. Once you have this dictionary of parameters, then you can create your ARX model. Then the rest of it is just going to be doing a simulation, put in some different inputs, and with a time, simulate with I mode 4. Just say nodes equals 2 because we're dealing with a discrete system here. And then solve, and then I'll put a figure there. Okay, so when I run this, 
I'm going to get a simulation. Uh, here I have my U steps, and then I can see my simulated outputs. So this is what you'd use if you already know your coefficients and you want to be able to simulate an ARX model or create one for model predictive control. But let's go down, maybe you don't know your model and you might have some data. So let's use system identification, the sysid part of Gecko. Okay, so I'll just import Gecko, Pandas, and Matplotlib. Now let's go ahead and load some sample data. All right, here's some sample data that's just available. And I will also read that in with Pandas. And here's my time. My inputs are going to be Q1 and Q2. And then there's my outputs, T1 and T2. All right, I'll generate a Gecko model and then do system identification. I'll have number of output coefficients. These are things that you can change. Okay, how many coefficients you want and how many time steps back you want to be able to look. All right, we don't need to do 60 here for NB because uh, we also have this auto regressive part of the model. So we can generally make those a little bit shorter. I find that anywhere between one to five typically works well. You can also have different values for NA and NB. All right, here's our predicted values, the parameters that we input before as a dictionary, it will produce those, and then our gain matrix as well. And I'll just say m.sysid, and I'll have my time, my input value, my exogenous inputs, and then there's my y, data, and na, and nb, and then I'll create a figure on this. All right, I'll plot the, the inputs, u, and I'll create a legend, and then in my second subplot, I'm going to plot the measured values, the predicted values. Okay, so predicted values came right here from the sysid. And then I'll show the figure. All right, so I'm going to run this one. And it is going to solve and then produce a prediction here. If you have a lot of data, it's going to take a little bit longer to, um, to solve this. It's using actually an output error form. For this one, you can make it go a lot faster if you just want to use the measurements. Okay, so here is the response, and you can see the inputs Q and the output response for the temperatures. And so here the measured value is in blue, and you can see um, the green is the predicted. So fairly close, looks like a second order you know, NA, NB of two did a fairly good job of matching up. There's a little bit of noise that you can see in some of the um, inflection points, but um, overall it does a fairly good job of matching the data. All right, now the other thing you can do is um, sometimes you wanna create a step test plot just to be able to investigate your model after you've shown how it fits. So I just wanna show you how to do that this one takes a little bit of code. I'll also show you a, a somewhat simpler way to do this. Okay, we're gonna load in the same data and I'll just change the order. All right, I'll have three output, two input coefficients, and I'll do the system identification again. Okay, just create a figure with a plot and that will show the system identification. And then what I need to do is just load those parameters back into this ARX model. Okay, and then I'll simulate that. I'll do a steady state initialization and then some step tests. So I'm going to go out to 240 time steps. And I'll also set time shift to zero so when I re-simulate it, it doesn't advance the initial condition. All right, I'll solve it. And then I need to do a step for heater one. All right, and then I'll do a step for heater two. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this. It's gonna do the system identification with a slightly larger model, and then it's gonna create these step test plots for us that are gonna show us what the model would do if you just gave it just a simple step instead of this complicated input of steps. It helps us isolate maybe the dynamics and also the gain of our model as well.
Okay, so as I go down, I can see the identified model and then also some of the step tests. So this is our Q1 step here. And then you can see the temperature went up. Um, you know, temperature two shouldn't have gone down. So there's something in our model here where uh, maybe it actually should have because it was at a little higher temperature to start with at 28. So um, it actually it looks not too bad of a response here for both of those. Okay, so let's go on to this activity now. This one's going to be to collect data from a physical lab device. And I've got one here that I'll show you as we hook it up and then um, collect some data. And if you don't have one, you can always just use the TC Lab model instead. Um, but let's go ahead and collect some data from this. I'll import TC Lab. You can pip install that if you don't have it. All right, here's pandas, matplotlib. And I'll just create a storage for that. And if you don't understand this part, how to collect the data, I would recommend this other part of the course that we've gone through previously um, down here on Pandas Time Series. So if you just select that, it'll show you how to collect data from Pandas. Um, and I just recommend that if you you know, want to want to go through that. Also. The other thing that can help is you can also speed up your data collection if you want to run the simulator and then put a speed up factor of 10 or 100 in there or something like that. Okay, so you can speed up the emulator, the digital twin simulator, if you'd like to. All right, I'm just going to run this on a physical device though. Okay, I have Q1, Q2, uh, 0, and then I'm just going to change that model to TC Lab right here. Well, let's go for a little over five minutes, six minutes there. Okay, so I'm going to change Q1 to 70. If I equals 5, if I equals 105, I'll change it to 25. Okay, if it equals uh, 205 for the time steps, we're going to change it to 100 and then back to 0. All right, I'll put in my Q1 and Q2 values and then store those into this data frame. And then every 10 rows, I'm going to print out this line. And I'll sleep for one second. All right, I'll set my index equal to time. And I'll describe my data frame. I'll put it out to a CSV file so I can run it later. And then I'll plot. OK, so in this case, I'm going to change TC Lab to, OK, instead of TC Lab model. And then let me just show you what this little device looks like. I'll just Put my webcam over here. <clears throat> okay, so here's our here's our device, and I'm gonna go ahead and just start running this. Okay, and you'll see this TC Lab. It'll connect, and then every 10 seconds, it'll put out a new value here. Okay, so we'll see this uh, start to populate. It's going to go for six minutes, so I'm going to pause the video here, and then we'll come back a little bit later, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, collect the data and then look at it. So the other thing that's going to happen is, you know, as it starts heating up, those, uh, you know, there's a little bit of thermochromic paint on it, so it's going to turn pink on the TC Lab. So you're going to see that uh, heat up. And uh, the other thing that we want to do, just as this is going, is um, you know think about what we want to do with our Q2 steps. So we only have Q1 steps in here. And so we want to add some step changes for Q2 that are offset from the Q1. All right. So maybe just copy these right here. All right, and then I'm going to put a few of these in here. I'll just let this run and collect our first data set. Maybe I'll run it again and do it with Q2 values as well. So I'll just change those to Q2. And then else, if it's not equal to that, then I'll just say just keep it at the Q2 value. All right, let's go ahead and offset these times. So maybe 55, 155, 
255 and then maybe 305. Okay, but I want to make these maybe just a little bit different. Let's set that to 30, 95, okay, 60, and then zero. So I step up, up more, back down, and then back down to zero. And, um, you know, so I'll go ahead and run this first one. You can see just the, this right side is getting is becoming pink so that's the only one that's getting really that hot right now a little bit of you know heat is transferred over to the other side just as you know it, it feels some of the convective effect of the first one but overall it's just um, you know just on the right side there okay so I'll let this one run first and then I'll do it again six minutes more and collect the other one as well the data collection finished for this first one. And I've just added a second TC lab there, you know, just in case it has trouble cooling down, I'll switch over to it. But let's go look at our results here. You can see every 10 seconds. Okay, you can see the summary of the data right here, where it says after it disconnected, you can see the 361 points that it collected. All right, and here's the Q1 and Q2. You can see temperature one and temperature two. Temperature two did rise just a little bit, not very much, but T1 responded a lot more. Now, the other thing that it did is it put out just this um, TC lab. I'll just save this as maybe, um, let's go ahead and save this, open it up, just make sure it looks okay, and then also rename it to TC lab one. And maybe the other one to TC Lab 2 when I do use two heaters instead of one. Okay, so that looks good. All of the data are there. And I'll just go ahead and rename this. All right. Oh, it looks like I couldn't somehow see my... Yeah, when I'm screen recording, it's hard to see what the uh, TC Lab 2. Okay, there it is. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and just rerun this again. And then uh, I'll go ahead and disconnect and then reconnect the other one just so I don't have to wait for it to cool down. Okay, connected the other one, and then I'll just run it again. And let me change this TC Lab 2 so I don't have to rename it later. I'll just watch it for one cycle just as it starts collecting. And now it's going to start changing Q2, not just the Q1 values. It has now finished collecting. Fortunately, I was able to uh, catch this TC Lab 1. I renamed it TC Lab 2. I was going to write over it, but I did that before it got to this point. So we have both of them saved. Let's go ahead and scroll down and just look at some of the data for this. So you have Q1 and Q2 and some of those steps. All right, looks like I did not uh, change the time here. So it happened at the same time for Q2. And there you can see the response of T2 and T1 as well. So let's use this data that was collected. And I guess I will go back up and just correct this for later. There's 255. I probably want to change that to you know, something like 285 or uh, 235 just to make it staggered or 225. There we go. So I'll do that for the future one. Uh, but let's go ahead and just uh, use some of this data now. So I'm going to just bring this webcam back up. Okay, there we go. And um, so this is relatively easy now to use some of this data for doing the system identification. I'm just going to scroll up here to this... Um, 
ARX system identification and URL instead of that, let's just go ahead and use a tclab1.csv. Okay, and we'll run the identification with that first file that we created. Okay, so it looks like even with you know Q two zero, it still is able to regress this one. Looks okay. You know, you could see a little bit of noise from the TC two or the the uh, temperature two data. All right, and let's go ahead and just change this to TC lab two now, and rerun this just to regress a model with both temperature one and temperature two. Okay. So here we can see uh, it fits fairly well. Okay, you can see a little bit of this change right here. You can see a little bit of oscillation after it finishes. All right, but those are the minimized uh, fits. All right, now let's go and just run this one now. So again, this one's just going to be uh, TC Lab 2. CSV and we'll do some step test plots with this. Okay, we'll see how it behaves. Oh, it said solution not found. All right, so this one was with three and four. I'm just going to change those to two and two. Okay, the optimizer, it's an iterative optimizer. I'll show you a method that uh, you can use to um, you know, guarantee a solution, create an explicit solution. Okay, so here are the steps for each of those. It shows the step response. Okay, so um, one of the things you can do is if you do get no solution, you also want to solve just a little bit faster than in the sysid right here. Uh, what we can do is, let's just go ahead and do, um, look at the system identification, sysid gecko. Okay, I'm going to go to the documentation, and then just search for sysid. Alright, so this is a PRED, we can use model or mes. All right, so if you want to have this calculate just a lot faster, you just do pred equals mes, and okay, and then it's going to simulate after that finishes. Okay, the model generally isn't as good. You can get a biased prediction, so I normally like to use the default, which is um, is going to be model instead. Okay, so but that is one option if you want to get if you need to be able to initialize it or you weren't able to get a solution, go ahead and switch it over to MES. Okay, so uh, we've generated, we've done the activity. Uh, a next step would be to use this model and do something like uh, convert it into a model predictive controller or to use it to predict into the future based on this dynamic simulation model. All right, the other thing I want to show you as well um, and I put a link here in the web page is there's also the system identification open source package. So in a lot of industrial settings, you use something that's a graphical user interface. All right. And so here is just a user guide where it shows you how to input the data. Now this couples up with seek and seek platform really helps you browse the data and be able to select regions that are of interest that you'd like to include in the system identification but you can also use this offline without that package uh, if you have your data and you just want to include all of that in the identification you can um, you know there's a couple examples here that will show you that and this is a very nice package for just being able to uh, do the system identification graphically. All right, and there are many options here, ARX, subspace, neural network, transfer function, and you'll see a graphical user interface where you can browse the models, set them inactive or active. Um, if you set them inactive, they'll return to zero. So for large system identification projects, 
doing this graphically and yeah, with this graphical user interface is often very nice. Uh, but what we showed in, in the video tutorial was, uh, you know, not this GUI method that, you know, is the back end for this, uh, but we showed how to do this with code with a Python script. Well, thanks for joining. Um, I'll just come back here to the course website and just show just a little bit more about what we're going to do next. Okay, and uh, also, uh, so there's state space that we'll cover next in addition to ARX models. And then uh, one thing that's of interest is this fired heater controller where it's a realistic MPC application from a refinery from a fired heater and it gives a more complete example of how to do the uh, this model predictive controller and setting up uh, these systems but we could also do system identification for this as well.